So in our first video, we're going to look at the meaning of f of c versus the limit as x approaches c of f of x. I think before we jump into limits, uh, some of the confusion typically comes from uh, the meaning of these two uh, symbols, because uh, we're going to talk about both of them a lot. So um, first of all, uh, what I think, think about them as really, this c is an x value, that's all it is, right? So c is saying some random x, we're not specifying where, it's like a general way of saying like at any x value, okay? So for f of c, this is referring to the height, if we're thinking of like maybe a graph, I like to say height instead of the y value at that x value. Um, we can also just think of it as, right, the y value for the given, or I'll say, I'll still say at, I kind of want to say the at c, at that given x value c. So, right, that's our x, that's our x value. Um, you could think of it in terms of like equations, like it's the output. f of c would be what you get if you put c in, right? That's our x value. So the c is like our input, and the f of c would be our output. So that's what you can think of f of c as. Uh, limits, you can think of the same thing. On a graph, a limit is a height, but it's not at c. It's the height as we approach the x value of c, right? So as x gets close to c, so we like to say that as it gets closer and closer, as it's approaching, it's where is the height headed? So it's not what the height is at C, but as you approach C. And that's the real difference here. It's this word, right? When we look at F of C versus the limit as X approaches C. These are at the X value. This is gonna be all those same things as we approach. We could think of it as the Y value as we approach the X value C. What Y value are we approaching, okay? Um, and same thing for output. Like if we look at a table of values, it'll be the same idea. What are the what are the y values headed towards as we approach the x value? Not when we get to the x value. When we get there, that's f of c. The limit is as we, is as we approach. And of course, there's going to be we can approach from either side of an x value, right? So we're going to have the limit as x approaches c from the left, or the limit as x approaches c from the right. Um, and if these two things are the same height, if they're going to the same place, then we would say that's the limit as x approaches c. So limit is about where it's headed. It's not about, it's, it's about where the y value or the height is headed. It's not about where, what it is when it gets there. So let's look at an example. Here's a continuous function. And we'll look at this x value right here, c. All right. F, uh, let's say that this y value here, we'll just call that L. F of C equals L in this case, because right at C, the height of the function happens to be L, right? So that's at C. When we look at the limit of F of C, uh, let me do this, I'll rewrite this in yellow so we can kind of see. When we talk about the limit as x approaches c of f of x, what's that equal to? Well, now that means I got to check the limit as I approach from the left. So as I approach the x value from the left, I'm up here on the curve. Uh, I keep getting closer and closer to some y value. So where is it headed? What height? I like to use the word height instead of y value on a graph. What height? is the graph headed towards as x heads towards c. Well, in this case, it's going to L also. And that's because, uh, that's from the, sorry, that's from the left. Uh, let's check from the right. From the right, uh, let's do another color here. From the right, as x approaches c on the right side, I'm at all these dots along this curve. What height are those headed towards? It looks like they're headed towards L. So then we can say the limit 
since both of these go to L, we could say the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals L. Let me write that down here because that's a little sloppy. The limit as x approaches c of f of x is L. Why is the limit L? Because it's approaching the same height from both sides, so therefore there is a limit. So again, the limit is about what height are you approaching versus the um, f of c is what is it when you are at the x value. So let's look at a different example. This function is not continuous at, because at this x value, c here, that random x value, we'll call it c. Let's look at f of c. Remember that means what's the height right at c? So the graph, the height is where the, the um, dot is. Up here, this is not the height at f of c. Okay, it's empty. This is the height of f of c. We'll call that one L. So in this case, f of c is L because that's the height right at the x value c. Now let's look at the limit. As we approach c, as x approaches c from the left, we're up here. These are all the dots for each one of those x values. If I pick an x value, there's a corresponding y value or height, and they're all headed towards that height, which we'll call this say m. So the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is m. Now let's check from the right. So as we approach a c from the right, as x approaches c from the right, that's what this, uh, well sorry, that's from the left, let me rewrite it. The limit as x approaches c from the right so that's what it means, right? This part of the statement right here, it's saying x is approaching c from the right side. The limit part is saying what's the height approaching? Well, we're up here on the curve headed towards that same height of m. Since these match, we know the limit as x approaches c is m. Now, in this case, um, we notice that the limit, the height that we're approaching, is not the same thing as the height right at the x when we get there. So on our way there, we're headed towards this height of m, but when we get there, it actually jumps down to this height of l. So um, that's how we can actually test if a function is continuous. In continuous functions, at every single point, like this point c, you'll notice that the limit matches f of c. Where you're headed is equal to what it's defined when you get there. The heights are the same. It's headed to the same height that it actually is when you get there. That's what makes a continuous function. And we're going to use that idea quite often.